Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner. Welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the pleasure of meeting with Justin Sapula. He's managing partner with Janik Performance Group. Welcome, Justin. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So let's talk about promoting salespeople from their position, managing sales, to becoming a sales manager where they yeah. manage people. Yeah, it's a big transition. You know, uh, we help a lot of organizations with this. And one of the things we see often is sales managers get promoted because they were good at sales. And one of the things that we um, help our clients realize is just because they're good at sales doesn't necessarily they're going to be good at sales management. You know, um, a sales to, in order to be good at sales, you have to be, have certain activities, you have to have certain skills, and you have to be able to you know, follow a certain process, let's say. Sales managers, that's completely different. So instead of managing the sale, you're managing people. So you have to understand that if you're a salesperson, you know, being promoted into management, that you have to look at this as a different job, and you're going to have to develop some different skills. So I think that's one of the, uh, the pitfalls, you know, and is you have to, to recognize that you're taking somebody from one role into another role. So what is the percentage of failure rate that you normally see in your client companies? Well, if you talk about turnover, you know, typically a turnover in an organization, and, and every industry is a bit different, so it's, it's tough to generalize this, but, you know, a lot of companies are ru running around the 10% mark of their, you know, of their sales organization. Sales management is typically less than that, um, so I get, that's a good sign, right, that you typically have less turnover for that. I think probably the biggest impact is you take a top performing salesperson and now you put them into sales, sales management. And especially with smaller organizations uh, tend to struggle with this because he was your, your leader. You know, that, right. that was your top performer. Right. So somebody's got to come in and fill in that revenue and then you want somebody in management that can help multiply that and that right. can be a challenge. So Justin, let's assume I'm a newly appointed sales manager. You give me the opportunity. Yeah. Um, how would you coach me? How should I prioritize my time so I can get the best results out of my team. Yeah, I, I would steer you in a few directions, but one primarily, right? So time management is big for sales managers. Sales managers have to do a lot, and uh, they're all busy, and they have, now they have more responsibilities in a the sense they're responsible for multiple people. But if I could say, you know what, where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck, where you're going to focus most of your time is around coaching. I would help this sales manager understand that one of your primary jobs is to develop others, right? Because if you can develop the skills of others, then those skills can be put to work to get better outcomes, right? So sales management is not about just, uh, um, you know, giving them tasks, do, looking at reports and following a process, but it's actually making people better. You know, and that's where I think a salesperson probably has an advantage to a sense because they have done the job, you know, and they know what it takes. So, but they have to be able to now develop those skills in others. So that, that's where I'd point them is, is development of people, sales coaching. So I would assume that the company has a sales process. So do you coach to the process? Do you coach to the skill? Do you coach to the outcome? What will be your advice for me? Yeah, the process they just need to know. So, I mean, to an extent, you coach the process, sure, they have to know the process, but really where you're focusing on is the behavior, the skills, right? So what is required at this step of the process for that salesperson to be successful? And as we know, there's different skills at various parts in the sales process right. that are effective. You right. know, if you're talking about prospecting and business development, or if you're navigating a complex sale, there's lots of different steps, lots of different stages. So as a sales manager, to be helpful, focus in on the key behaviors, right, and the key skills that are relevant to that part of the sales process and help your team develop those skills and to be better at that point to get a better outcome. Right. So how do I prevent, as a newly appointed sales manager, that uh, salespeople won't put their monkey on my back so they want me to solve their problem? Yeah, that's a big one. I think because most people are problem solvers by nature, so they get into the role and they want to solve the problem. Um, but I think about it as most people can relate to as their children, right? So think about if your child comes home and says, Dad, I need help with this homework. Um, you can either give them the answer Right? Or you can kind of help them along the way. And you can say, okay, well, let's look at this. And I think if you just give them the answer, 
What did they get out of that? They got the answer and now they go back to school, right? But if you help them along the way and you say, okay, well, let's talk about the problem. What do you think the answer is? Or, you know, where are you struggling? Or do you think about it this way? Or can you think about it that way? That's really what developing is all about. You know, there's a, there's a key term that's been around in the, the sales industry for a long time, consultative selling, right, which most people are familiar with, the idea of asking questions and focusing on needs. And we look at coaching through a similar lens. You know, it's be more consultative in your coaching. Ask questions and get them to think, because if you get them to think and problem solve on their feet, then when they're out in the field, they're going to be able to rely on those skills. They're going to be able to think and problem solve. And if you just give them the answer, if you jump in and close the deal, then it's a short-term fix. And as a sales manager, you do need to be more long-term, a bit more long-term focused. So there are actually two performance problems that we can look at that we can separate. One is, um, is it a skills issue that impedes the performance or is it a will issue yeah. that prevents them from performing successfully? How do you deal with either one of them? Yeah, so you're, there are two. That's the first thing, right? So it, there is a difference between those two. What the skill is, I don't know how to do it, or I don't know how to do it well. The will is, I don't want to, or I don't believe in it, right? So I think our values and our beliefs drive our behavior. So if it's a, if it's a will issue, you have to get down to the motivational aspect of it, right? You have to get down to the mindset. And that, that is a common thing we see with our, with our clients as well, is that you know, sales managers are really fo working on a will issue, but they're throwing more training at it or more coaching at it, and it's not successful, um, and the vice versa. You know? So I think if you're fo focusing on a will issue, focus on values and belief and motivation so they know what's in it for them, and they have to see how doing whatever it is you're asking them to do, they have to see how that's gonna help them get to where they want to go whether that's maybe performance in the company and maybe even it's externally, right? So like linking it back to their life, perhaps. And then if it's a skill issue, then focus on the behavior, right? Focus on, try to be specific. You know, don't tell a, uh, a salesperson to go build better relationships with your clients. You know, so when, when, you, when you look at m mindset and skill set, what, what is strong in your opinion? Um, I think one comes first. I think the mindset and the will comes first. The belief comes first. And then second, then if I believe that it's important and I believe I should do it, then now I have to have the skills to be able to do that. So I'm not sure which one's more important, but I think one comes first, right? If you have skills without will, then you're not, you're not right. going to go anywhere. Yeah. What is the best coaching tip you have ever gotten? The best coaching tip, um, is to, is to be consultative with coaching. You know, when I was uh, younger as a sales manager, you know, I was the problem solver and I wanted to go in and say, here's how you do it. And I was very directive in my coaching. And I learned later the, the value of helping people solve their own problems, helping get them get to some self-realization -realiz right. because that sticks with somebody. And if you, you really got to teach someone to think on their feet, you know, and I think the approach to coaching, one of the best tips I ever got was to be more uh, consultative, you know, in, in the coaching. Well, thank you so much. That was very yeah. informative. Thank you for having me. I will let you coach me more. Okay. I look forward to it.